Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today I'm going to revisit my algae turf scrubber, the Rain 2 by Santa Monica. The original review and video that I did on that was one of the most popular videos of my channel, but since then I've learned a bit more about algae and algae scrubbers in the marine aquarium and I've also had a lot of questions about it, so I wanted to cover off that in more detail and provide you a more up-to-date view on how I'm using it and the results that I get out of my algae turf scrubber. I guess a good place to start is uh, why we would want to grow algae in our tanks. Um, and an algae turf scrubber is essentially a utopia for algae. Uh, it's creating a place where algae will grow and it will consume the nutrients in your water that algae likes to eat. Things like ammonia, nitrate and phosphate and to a limited degree certain heavy metals like copper, aluminium and iron. All of these are generally considered pretty bad for the tank at high levels and a lot of reefers really struggle to keep them low uh, or only achieve that through constant water changes or lots of other products or consumables. So by creating this utopia for algae, creating an environment in which it can grow really, really effectively, it essentially outcompetes all the other algae in the tank and it won't grow anywhere else, meaning your display is completely free of nuisance algae. Your water quality can also improve dramatically as, as the algae will consume vast amounts of phosphate and nitrate from the water. There are many other benefits to running an algae turf scrubber in your tank. Uh, the photosynthesis of the algae will raise pH. Uh, it also raises oxygenation of your water. Uh, most algae turf scrubber manufacturers claim that it's actually more effective at oxygenating your water than a skimmer. It will lower the CO2 in the tank because that's how photosynthesis works. It's they suck CO2 out of the water and put oxygen into the water. And algae growth will also release amino acids into the water column, which is a form of coral food. The screen on the algae turf scrubber will become a safe haven for copepods, many beneficial creatures, which are great for fish like mandarins, but also really good for coral health. One of my favorite features of an algae turf scrubber is that it is self-limiting. Unlike chemical nutrient removal methods, which have the possibility to completely strip your water of a particular nutrient entirely, algae will simply stop growing or adapt to grow slower once a low threshold has been reached. This can be easily tuned by turning up or down the length of time that you leave the lights on on the algae scrubber, aka the photo period. What this means is that it's really easy to find and maintain that threshold where your nutrient levels are low but not non-existent and then maintain it ongoing, which is perfect for our corals who like stability. So with a list of pros like that, it should be pretty obvious why you would want to grow algae in a dedicated or controlled part of your tank, like, this, like a piece of equipment in the sun, AKA an algae turf scrubber, and not in a display. I won't be covering in this video refugiums or catamorpha reactors, as I don't have personal experience with them. But with my method of growing algae, a waterfall style algae turf scrubber, it grows a very specific type of algae, and that's green hair algae, or turf algae as it's sometimes called, on a mesh screen. That's instead of the regular macro algae that you might more commonly hear of, like Kato or Chato, depending on however you want to pronounce it. There are a few advantages to green hair algae over macro algae, and the main one is that it's self-seeding. Green hair algae will start growing on your algae turf scrubber magically. There's no need to acquire some like you do with Catamorpha. Green hair algae by weight is also far more nutrient dense than Kato, meaning it takes up a much smaller surface area and a much smaller amount to pull out the same amount of nutrients. Green hair algae is a very simple organism with simple cellular structures. It forms extremely thin strands, in fact thousands of them, uh, which increases the available surface area and contact time with the water. One issue with Catamorpha that many people have is that it's very heavily self-shading and many reactors go to great lengths to try and mitigate this issue of Catamorpha. Green hair algae to a certain degree does suffer from self-shading. However, this effect is less pronounced due to the strands being not as rigid and being semi-translucent. Algae scrubbers can be added to the tank while it's cycling. It may just take a bit longer to get it fully seeded. Most people that are experienced with Catamorpha will tell you not to add it to the tank until well after it's been cycled, as Catamorpha has a bad tendency to crash in immature tanks. 
There's a common myth out there that I keep hearing that algae turf scrubbers and algae reactors are not as efficient at harboring copepods as refugiums. Uh, in my experience, this is simply not the case. I think most people are confusing amphipods, the larger two to four millimeter critters that you can see with the naked eye, with copepods. Copepods are extremely difficult to see under most circumstances with the eye, and they're much, much smaller. It's true that a refugium is better for amphipods, However, copepods are what mandarin dragonets eat. And generally when we're discussing copepods, the very next sentence is gonna include how do I keep mandarin dragonets? Copepods are also an exceptional food source for coral. Amphipods in really strong numbers are actually thought to be quite harmful to coral. Many a zoa keeper will, will tell you horror stories of their favorite zoa being eaten by amphipods. Your algae turf scrubber will be filled with millions of microscopic copepods which constantly enter the water column and propagate your whole tank. Even in a small three foot tank like mine, just because of the algae turf scrubber, I was very easily able to support four mandarin dragonets with no supplementary feeding, no pathetic attempts to try and get them to eat mysis. Simply, they were self feeding off the copepod population in the tank, which was fueled by the algae turf scrubber. However, I do want to be balanced and there are some cons associated with green hair algae. One is it needs to be harvested a little bit more frequently than something like catamorpha. Because when it does overgrow to the point of shading, the underneath will begin to die and detach from the screen in the algae turf scrubber and then you might find green hair algae floating around your tank. Which is not typically ideal. Typically this begins to occur after about three weeks. So most people will harvest their algae turf scrubber every seven to 14 days, depending on your tank and exactly how quickly it's growing in your particular scrubber. For me, I found about the 10 to 12 day mark is usually when I harvest, but I have many times been a bit lazy and pushed that upwards of 15, 16, 17, even 20 days with no issue at all. I've never gone longer than that, uh, so my quote on the green hair algae starting to shadow itself to the point where it dies and falls off the screen after three weeks is unproven in my case, but there's enough uh, anecdotal evidence out there, I think, to support that. Although you could be free to push the limits yourself and see what works for you. Another consideration, maybe a con with algae turf scrubbers, is that the design for them is less standard than a typical cylinder or reactor style piece of equipment. And for that reason, you might have to put a little bit more planning into exactly how you're gonna integrate one into your sump. For me, my algae turf scrubber works purely off my overflow. That is the drain line from my display to my sump. There's a fork in my plumbing. One half goes into a filter sock and the other half feeds a hard plumbed line directly into the algae turf scrubber. So there's no pump, it's just running off gravity and that provides the perfect flow for the waterfall of the algae turf scrubber where a sheet of water runs down the screen. The effect of this waterfall is to create a turbulent air water interface over a rough surface, which is then blasted from both sides by these waterproof LEDs, which are tuned to a specific red spectrum, optimal for growing algae. Another question that I really commonly get is, do I ever get algae growing in the sump or on the outside of the scrubber? or bits of algae floating around the tank? And the answer to that is just absolutely not. I've never experienced any of those things. There's no algae outside. There's, I've never found any algae outside of the scrubber. It does a really good job keeping the light contained within the unit so it doesn't spill over into the rest of the sump. And because I've never let the scrubber go more than 20 days without being clean, I've never experienced the algae detaching from the screen and floating around the tank either. About probably, Three months ago, the power supply on the lights inside my algae scrubber failed, but it was a fairly simple and quick process to get a replacement for that. And power supplies are fair, and the power supply is fairly standardized anyway. So even if you didn't want to source a replacement directly from Santa Monica Filtration, you could easily get a standardized one from anywhere else. Obviously there are two tangs in my tank, so on occasion I'll feed some of the green hair algae that I harvest from the scrubber via a clip directly back to the tangs. There's something cool about feeding the tangs directly from algae that's grown in their own tank. Another point I'd make on comparing an algae scrubber to a protein skimmer is that the cleaning regime 
takes about the same amount of time and about the same amount of frequency that many people do when cleaning their skimmer. One thing to note, cleaning a skimmer smells far more foul than cleaning an algae turf scrubber. The, sh the screen of green algae might look gross because it's bright green, but it doesn't smell at all. It has no smell. So it's a much more pleasant thing to clean than a dirty skimmer cup. Typically it would take two to three weeks for a brand new algae turf scrubber to become seeded and start growing green hair algae or turf algae. If your tank is still cycling or very new, that time might take a little longer. However, that's usually fine as the bio load will be much lower for a new tank. I've been running the Rain 2 on my tank for over two years now and I'm on my second screen. At about the 18 month mark is when I swapped out my screen. So based on that, I'd say you could expect similar results for the lifespan of the screens. They don't last forever, but they are a very cheap and easy part to replace. For the first year, my tank probably averaged nitrates of around two parts per million. For the last year and a bit, I've probably been averaging about five parts per million. I run the lights on my Rain 2 for 18 hours, starting in the evening and turning off mid-morning the next day. Because I added the Rain 2 shortly after I cycled my tank, back when I only had two clownfish and basically no coral, it's essentially been on my tank since the rockwork was pristine and still looks and still looked exactly like it did when it was dry. I have never, for the life of my tank, ever had any significant algae growth on any of my rockwork. I attribute this entirely to the rain too. I occasionally get a bit on my gyres for some reason. I think algae really likes the plastic there, but they're very easy to clean and very easy to scrub off. And if I leave it long enough, that algae gets taken over by coralline, which then also needs to be scrubbed off and is a lot harder to remove. I consider an algae scrubber more, a more essential component to a reef tank than a skimmer. In fact, all the manufacturers of scrubbers on the market make strong claims that skimmers are not necessary in the tank with effective scrubbers. If my skimmer broke tomorrow, I wouldn't replace it, and I'm really just running it because I own it. Based on the success that I've had starting my tank with an algae turf scrubber from the beginning, I would never run a tank without one in the future. I would possibly try an algae reactor, however the success I've had with the scrubber style growing green hair algae has been so good that I see little reason to experiment here. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions about algae turf scrubbers or things you want to discuss, post down below, I'll be in the comments section. I'll do my best to reply to everything. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to support my future content. It really helps me out. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Node YouTube channel. Bye for now.